Louis Luciani. Welcome, Lou. To be honest, I'm pleasantly surprised that you're still awake. So am I, mate. Billy and I were both struggling. It's way past your bedtime, Louis. I can tell you now that it was 22 years and six months ago to the time that we last saw in at this time. I was still awake at this time of the night. It was when we saw in the last turn of the century. Where were you, mate? At Pinocchio's or Gobbles? No, we were out at Rod Russell's place having a, having a piss up. <laughs> Not half as much fun. It's an honour, though and worth staying up for, I'm sure that you would agree, to be inducted into this Racing Hall of Fame. Certainly is. I mean, just to be mentioned in the same breath as these people before us and on tonight, it's, uh, it's certainly an honour and it's, uh, I'm not sure how it sits with me, but I'm sure I'll get used to it. You'll get comfortable with it, I'm sure, by the time we finish this. Louis, you describe yourself as being a, a lucky bloke. Tell us which parts do you think have been luck? Because it's obvious that your hard work, your determination and your dedication over these past 40 years of training have brought you this great success and this induction here this evening? Oh, look, I think it all comes with, uh, with luck. I mean, I, you know, this part could be a long story. I, I, I was lucky to have had great parents who, who instilled in me the Italian ethic for hard work. I was lucky to have been apprenticed to a champion bloke, Reg Strafone, who who taught me, gave me my initial start, my education, and was always there for guidance throughout my career until his death. So, you know, that was very, very lucky. I was lucky to, to have um, had that opportunity to get that job. I was, I was lucky, to, lucky to raise a couple of beautiful kids. Do you have been, Jack, you this evening with, with us? Been the bane of my existence for a long time, but they've... <laughs> they've they're, uh, they're doing a great job of their own now. Been lucky to have had the, the riders and the staff and everyone who have ridden for me. I've got one little fellow sitting down there, Jason Whiting, who started his apprenticeship with me in the late 80s. He still rides for me today. And whilst I'm up here getting uh, an award, I think any 90% of my winners and big race winners, you'll see his name alongside him as well. So, you know, that's... There's a lot of luck there. I, I'm, in the latter times now, I've got, uh, I'm lucky to have a, a, the greatest backstop and a magnificent woman in Trish, who's my partner. She's moved down south with me since uh, we decided to look for a bit of a sea, sea change and take things a bit easier. And we've kept having success. And I'm sure there's no small part of that success is due to her and her input. She's as, she's as good a horse person as I've ever come across. Um, yeah, so it's been in the right place at the right time and that sort of thing and I, I know we've all heard the saying about necessity being the mother of invention but I think opportunity is certainly the father of, uh, of success and I've been lucky enough to have a lot of opportunities come my way. A lot of hard work but with a sprinkling of luck of yeah. course blended in with it as well. You've touched upon Reg Raffone. I know that he was more than just a, a boss for you when you were apprenticed with him. He became like a father figure in many ways throughout your adult life. People forget but you once were a jockey and we have to go back some years and may I say, Lou, that as a jockey you made a great trainer. That was the other part where I was very lucky. I was, I was lucky <laughs> that I got heavy because I would have starved to death as a bloody jock. <laughs> but you rode for seven years, Luigi, and you, um, you never got suspended once in those seven years. No, you tend not to cause a lot of interference when you're hanging out the back, hanging on to it. Don't you? <laughs> don't sort of, you don't sort of knock many people down when you... And you're having a feel on them. Where does the nickname The Undertaker come from, Lou? I don't know, I suppose you'll have to work that one out yourself, mate. <laughs> Dealing with deadens? Oh, well, it was part and parcel of the, of the industry <laughs> back then and my boss didn't get his name Chili for nothing and that's how we, uh, that's how we had to operate and that's how he, uh, how he got a quid and that's how we had to get a quid and that's all it was about <laughs> back then. 
Yeah, uh, everyone had to week a living some way or other back there. And uh, if they needed a practice run, sometimes they needed to have good practice riders. Yeah, well, I, I, I don't know. I think I, well, I was certainly a lot better judge than I was a jock, but uh, it needed blokes like me around to make Kempi and Seth look, look as good as they, they were. So, so, you know, somebody had to do the dirty work and, uh, and that was that. And what, look, while I'm at it, I think uh, certainly congratulations to all the inductees, but special congratulations to Seth. We've been, been mates for a long, long time. Um, he started just after me. He was, he's always been a brilliant rider. And strangely enough, I'd, I can only think of a maiden winner at Bunbury in all the times that we've spent in racing together that uh, he, rode, he won for me. I don't think he wouldn't have had half a dozen rides for me in all our careers. He was busy riding for the, for the big guys in town. Um, I was still trying to make, make my way. We had different owners that we rode for or trained for. We had different punters in our team. Sorry, Seth. We, we had different punters that we had to get a quid out of. And, uh, As I say, everyone's got to make a living. Everyone's got to, everyone had to make a living, and that's just the way it was. Louis, in September of last year, the man who was such a guidance and so instrumental in your early training career passed away. How great an influence was he on you, the casino king, Dallas Dempster? Oh, well, he, he gave me the biggest opportunity of all. I think prior to that, I, uh, I'd started off with a job with Sir Ernest for a couple of years at Sir Ernest Lucia, and we had some success together. And Dallas shared an office with Sir Ernest out in Claremont somewhere. And uh, he, when I finished with uh, Sir Ernest, Dallas offered me few horses to train and I think the first three fillies he gave me we won about 21 races with them all and uh, sort of set things off pretty well um, gave me a few more and we kept winning and then he came and saw us one Saturday morning and sat us down and mentioned this uh, and showed us his video of a proposal for the Burswood Casino said if he got the license he would go into racing bigger would I did I want to be a part of it <laughs> didn't have to be Einstein to want to jump on board, uh, which I did, and he got the licence, he went into racing bigger, and away we went. At the same time this casino was being built, he was building some beautiful racing stables in Ascot, Lou. Was that just a coincidence? I think they were the same coloured brick, actually. I'm not, <laughs> not sure if it worked that way or not. <laughs> it was the talk of Ascot for a long time, wasn't it? Yeah, no, it was, it was certainly sim similar coloured brick, and this, similar builder and... All that was missing there was the roulette wheel. Well, we had that there every now and then too. We had two up there. We used to have a nice high ceiling so we could spin some pennies there. Island Morn, Hard Act, Amaquil, Prime again, some of the great gallopers to carry his Tilden Park racing colours. In your mind, Louis, who was the best of the many exceptional horses that you trained there for him, given the roll call of feature winners that you've saddled up? No, I, I couldn't isolate one of them. They're all different. They're all special. They're all, I mean, not Hard Act was as tough a horse as you'd want to come across. Hard Rider was the meanest horse you'd want to come across. Um, they're, they're all different. The one that probably means a, one of the, well, apart from you know, cup winners and all those sorts of things, but probably the one that means a lot more to me out of, and he doesn't, he wouldn't rate a mention, is a little horse called Sheer Grey. Um, that we back to 14 to 1 strongly one day and he got the money and that sort of set up half my property so <laughs> so he, he ranks highly more highly than, than most of them but uh, and you said before Mac about luck I've been lucky to have trained for not just Dallas and Sir Ernest but I've still got guys in the stable Lex and Shirley Piper I rode for them in the in the 70s they're still in the stable as clients some are at the table Billy Biggs, are you still awake, Bill? Bill, yep. Bill and his brother Keith have been in the stable for years. Brian Bradley, we, you know, we go back. We, the, the Walshers, Vern and Peter Walsh, you know, we've we had a lot of fun together and, and we've sort of been mates. And I don't know whether it was just something that we um, developed or it's just come along, but the, the clients have been mates and been there for, been there for support for me. They've been there to uh, pull me in the line when I open my mouth too much or, you know, when I step out of line or they've, they've been there for, for not only uh, supports as mates, but as any of us know that's been in racing as, as long as we have, there's times there when you haven't got much to, you haven't got two bob to rub together and 
you know, there's, there's guys there who uh, have been great with financial support. So, yeah, whilst you you might be on top of the mountain, there's, there's some days uh, things still get pretty tough, and there's no tougher industry than this. No, band of rooster one day, feather duster the next, as they, they say in this business, that's for sure and certain. Um, Getting Christmas cards from Wilson Tucky at all these days, Lou? Not lately, no. no? He's, uh, he's, he's sort of off, off his uh, Christmas card <laughs> list. <laughs> of course, the chapter there, one of the most volatile days on a race course I think anyone's ever experienced, but maybe that's for after this event <laughs> is all over tonight. We can reflect upon it. I always say that you and I were lucky, there's that word again, to have come through a period, I think, in WA racing, which has been dubbed the golden era. It was such a remarkable, an exciting time for racing. Would you be able, if you could, go back in time, or has racing, do you think, provided you with enough great memories to now reflect back upon? I think we're always still looking for another, for great memories, another champion, another, you know, another good horse, another horse to. Uh, it's an endless pursuit. Of course it is. You know, we, you know, I started off 50 years ago picking up horse shit and I'm still doing it. I don't know whether that makes me a success or a failure, but uh, you know, I'm still, still doing it and we're, lucky. It's, what, it's what we love. You're lucky you get to do it. Yeah. Louis, congratulations. It's been a pleasure watching your career coming in at pretty much the same time, seeing how you've evolved, the great trainer that you've become, and uh, we salute you on your induction here tonight into this WA Racing Hall of Fame. Well done, congratulations, my the friend. Thrill, the thrill's been all mine, Mac. I've, I've got to say that probably the biggest kudos of all, whilst we all, you know, whether it's opportunities, whatever it is, we can't do it without the horses. And they probably deserve the, the biggest pat on the back because if there's ever been a greater animal born, I've never met it. So it's a great job. And I think we share your sentiment, mate. Good on you. Well done, mate. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen.